We'll look at Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, would, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote before in few words, whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Now you might say, what is the gospel? Gospel means good news or glad tidings. It surely is good news because this news comes to us from the God of heaven. And what we need, what we need to understand is that we're sinners in the sight of the Lord when we're born in this world. We need forgiveness for those sins. If we don't receive forgiveness, we will end up dying and going down to hell. Now, God does not want you to go down to hell. And that's why I'm here this evening. I want you to come to faith in Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Make no mistake about it. You must be saved, otherwise you won't be in heaven. You'll be down in hell at the moment of death, and that is not God's will at all. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is why we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel is how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, so that you and I would have opportunity to get right with God, to have forgiveness for our sins. And that forgiveness is only possible through the once-for-all sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood that was shed on the cross in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. Or have you experienced forgiveness for your sins? In other words, are you a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ? The Bible says, for you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. There's no salvation apart from Jesus Christ, my friend. That's why the Bible says, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have the Son of God? Have you believed on him for your eternal salvation? Praise the Lord. Thanks for the encouragement. So we need to understand, because we're sinners, we are heading down to hell. But God does not want that, so he sent the Lord Jesus to die upon the cross as, as the divine substitute that took the sinner's place upon the cross of Calvary. So you see here, that is what the gospel is. As I said, that Christ died for our sins. Just repeat it. Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. If you come and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. What is it? Repentance toward God. That is, a change of mind, simply agree with God that you're a sinner and then believe of the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Then, at the moment of death, you'll be in heaven. But if not, you'll be in hell at the moment of death. God does not want this for us, my friend. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. A place where we'll change our mind, as I've said. Agree with God that you're a sinner. And then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the uh, grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all uh, saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery 
which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So we need to understand the Lord Jesus Christ is not only the Saviour and he wants to be your Saviour, but he's actually the great Creator God. You must understand the Lord Jesus Christ is God in a body. You see, God came down in the person of Jesus Christ to live the perfect life upon earth that you and I could never ever live and then die the perfect death upon the cross of Calvary as the divine substitute that took the sinner's place upon that cross and shed his precious blood for you and for me. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore, I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may be dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Again, this is actually written to Christians, to believers. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly, above all that ye we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church, by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world, without end. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, for bearing one another in love, endeavouring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given a grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave, gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it uh, but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in uh, the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. May we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom uh, the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, 
that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And again, this is written unto Christians to believers. Uh, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbour, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labour, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamour and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye uh, kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. I wonder, have your sins been forgiven? They can, you know, if you come by faith to the Lord Jesus Christ this evening. What you need to do is put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. Repentance toward God, as I've said, change your mind, agree with God that you're a sinner, and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Ephesians chapter 5, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Again, this is written unto Christians, to believers. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savour. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, that's fornicator, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, or empty words, useless words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. I wonder, are you a child of disobedience? As far as God is concerned, have you disobeyed the Lord and not come in repentance? You see, God now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a, a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. He's given assurance unto all men in the sense that he's risen him again from among the dead. So the Lord Jesus Christ not only died for us, he shed his precious blood for us, and in that blood, that blood still has the power to wash your sins away, my friend. God wants to forgive you of all of your sins. And the only way he can do that is through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot, the holy, perfect Son of the living God was made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So it says here, um, be not ye therefore partakers with them, that is, with the children of disobedience. In other words, those who are not saved, those who are not children of God. 
For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, providing uh, what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. In other words, buying up the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Again, this is written to Christians to believers, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the saviour of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives uh, as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you, in particular, so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. We need to understand, the main thing is that we need to understand, when we're born into this world, we're born as sinners, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because of that, we're heading down to hell. But God does not want us to go down to hell. He doesn't want to have to judge us. But he will if we die without Jesus Christ as our Savior. And I'm here to tell you this evening that your soul can be saved. This is my desire, this is my prayer unto the Lord, that you would be saved, that you would come to faith in Christ, so that your soul be saved, so that you would enter into heaven at the moment of death. You see, you and I have to realize that we are on a journey out into eternity. Eternity is forever. We cannot wrap our minds around eternity. And yet, we are heading for eternity. Where will you be five seconds after you die? This is the all-important question. And the destiny depends upon your decision. You'll either receive Christ as your Savior and be saved as a result, become a child of God, or you will reject or neglect him and finish up dying and going down to hell. This is not what God wants for any one of us. He's not willing, as I said earlier, he is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Why not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ this evening and become a child of God? You know you need to. You see, the point is this, without him we're dead in our trespasses and in our sins, heading down to hell because our sins have not been forgiven. 
But I'm here to tell you this evening that your sins can be forgiven. No matter what you've done, where you've gone, and, and, you know, whatever your words might have been, whatever your sinful behaviour might have been, you can receive forgiveness for those sins. And this is what God desires for each and every one of us, that our sins would be totally blotted out in the sight of God. How is that even possible? Only through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood that was shed that day on that cross, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sin. Lord, have your sins been forgiven? Are you on your way to heaven? Or are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? No need to go down to hell. God wants you to be in heaven. He wants us all to be in heaven, in fact. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your soul will be saved. This is the promise of God. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Is your soul saved? Are you on your way to heaven? Or are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? No need for that, my friend. You can be in heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ, finished work upon the cross, and your right response to that. Don't reject Christ any longer. You need to believe on him. You need to receive him. See, he came unto his own, and his own received him not, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Remember, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Well, I hope you've understood the message. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you, and thanks for listening. Have a great day.